I remember now. I was walking home. Something started to chase me. I tried to run. Something knocked me over and... Everything went black. I'm dead, aren't I? I really can't go home again. I'm just a ghost. You are so kind to me. Not many people I know would take the time to be polite to a ghost. I cannot leave this spot. Nor would I leave until I have my Nikolai beside me again. If you see him, please tell him. I love him. Nikolai is my true love. I cannot bear to leave without at least saying farewell to him. Thank you for helping me understand about being a ghost. I would be lost here forever without you. Farewell. And please, if you see Nikolai, speak to him for me. The ghostly apparition vanishes. You are in the western part. You are in the western part of the forest. It's a revenant, a zombie-like creature that has been brought back from the dead by magical means. They're very fond of living flesh. You've returned the revenant to its rest. With any luck, it'll stay dead this time. It exudes the delicate aroma of rotting flesh. You find some copper copex on the no longer undead. You carefully place some of the candy on the ground. You capture a few of the will-o'-wisps in a flask. When you bring the will-o'-wisp near the standing stone, Glowing runes appear around a six-pointed image. In the center of the runes, you can now see a small hole in the stone. When you touch the Dark One sign to its image on the squid stone, the sign locks into place in the small hole. The points of the sign seem to point to six of the glowing runes. As you complete the name of the Dark One, you feel a distant rumble under the earth, as of the earth shifting, or some unimaginably huge creature stirring in its sleep. Part of the squid stone opens to reveal a small compartment. You reach in to find a scroll covered with mysterious runes. The symbol of the senses at the top is the only part that you can make out. You also retrieve the Dark One sign, which pulls loose from the stone with a slurping, sucking sensation. The hole in the stone closes as you remove the sign. You release the Will-O-Wisps back into the swamp.
You slowly fill your flask with the greasy, grimy goo. Good to see you again. I hope you are enjoying your visit to Mordavia. You need to take better care of yourself, you know? It is very dangerous out at night. Come to me. I have something to show you. I warned you it is dangerous here at night and you do not listen. I intend to teach you a lesson. A strange feeling sweeps your body. You realize that you now know the frostbite spell. Perhaps that will help keep you alive when I am not with you. I bid you welcome to Mordavia. I hope you are enjoying your stay here. There. Now you have had an official welcome from your own official welcome woman. You try out a few of your best lines on her. <laughs> you flatter me. It is nice to have someone as handsome and attractive as you say such things to me. You tell her your name and a little about your adventures. How fascinating. I have never met a true hero before. You must tell me more sometime. You may call me Katrina. And what shall I call you? The forest is a very dangerous place. Many monsters walk here, especially at night. Please, please be careful. Magic is very useful for survival in Mordavia. Use it wisely and carefully. I, I must go now. I hope we can meet again soon. I enjoy your company. Before you can think to follow her, the young peasant girl has disappeared into the forest. You hear movement on the other side of the door. After a few minutes, you hear someone removing the bar and unlocking the bolts on the other side of the door. Have a seat! Wait! No, better leave the seats here. But why don't you sit down on one? This show can't get on the road until you get off your load. So sit a while and enjoy yourself. Or maybe just sit. Gnome is just plain folks, a clown around town. Everything about him epitomizes bad taste in attempted humor. Good evening, ladies and germs. A funny thing happened on the way to Mordavia. I got here. I walked up to the innkeeper here and says to the guy, Do you know how lucky you are to have such a funny guy as myself staying here? The innkeeper says no, but if you hum a few bars, I can fake it. You may as well laugh now, this act doesn't get any funnier. I sit down here for a meal and order some soup. When the waiter brings it in, I says, waiter, there's a fly in my soup. The waiter says, of course, that's the soup du jour. Am I going deaf in here? Or how can so many people sleep with all these lights on? Seriously, folks, I went to the doctor just the other day, and he said he had some good news and some bad news. What's the good news, I asked? You only have three months to live, said the doc. That's terrible. What's the bad news? I said. The doc replied, I'm getting married. 
I know I had an audience when I came in here. Anyhow, show me a guy with a million kopecks, and I'll show you a guy who's rich. Hey, you only had to listen to this material. I'm the one who had to stand here and take it. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've been a swell bunch of seats. Phew. The Gnome has stopped speaking. Maybe he's finished telling his joke. You think about applauding, but you're not quite sure if you've heard the punchline yet. What did you think of my performance? Was I hilarious or what? Is this an inn or a cemetery? I've had livelier times at funerals. Some help you were. Couldn't you at least have smiled a little louder? It's nights like these that make me feel like an inept idiot and a lousy laughing stock. I'd make more money digging graves. But what? And get out of show business? He too is a stranger to Mordavia. Hey, what am I, shredded wheat? If you're talking behind my back, at least have the courtesy to do it face to face. I try to keep people entertained here. So how come you weren't up on the stage instead of me? I have not listened to such nonsense in all my life. You call this a life? Be they ever so humble, there's nobody stays home. I've been on the road so long, I have flat tires on my feet. I go wherever I can tell a good joke, and many places where I can't. I'm staying at this inn for a while until I find something here. I got the last door down the hall. Visit me sometime. I'm sure we can have a few laughs together. Hey, my last tour was a great success. I outran everyone. But there's no business like show business. With me, the show must go on and on and on. I got millions of them. Problem is, I can't remember most of them, and the ones I do remember should have been buried long ago. I used to be worth my wit in gold, but oh, it's a long story. Ask me about it some other time. Pleased to meet you. I could tell by your outfit that you were no ordinary rube. Punny bones, the name. Joke's a fair game. I'm a pro punster. Thank you, thank you. I always like to meet a receptive audience. It's always good to see you. It means you're not behind my back. Well, you know I'm not a census taker over here, but there are no other gnomes in Mordavia. No wonder. Yeah, when they show up, there goes the neighborhood. We have no need for gnomes here. You guys are so narrow-minded, you could all look through a keyhole with both eyes. What gnome would want to work here? You guys have all the sense of humor of a wyvern with a hangover. At the risk of waxing poetic, what need have we of fools? Hey, you got a point. There are enough fools in here already to reach critical mass. If it pays to be ignorant, why are you guys so broke? Somebody just shoot me. And just when I was going to invite you to my party, there's always room for one boy. Oh, I'll tell you, he's rough, you know? Anyone could tell better jokes than that gnome did. Where's Shaky Green when you need him? Look, I'd argue with you, but I never engage in a battle of wits with an unarmed man. The guy's dying up there. I didn't get anything. Hey, how could you? If ignorance is really bliss, you're the world's happiest guy. Fellas, is it just me or is, uh, Shecky's performance here lacking a certain sense of humor? Are you kidding? He was rough. Get a day job! You're right, and he wasn't very funny either. What do you mean I wasn't funny? You guys wouldn't know a punchline if it hit you in the face. Leaving so soon? Good night, and thanks for all the fish.
you unlock the door to your room and go in. After some rest, you feel better. After some rest, you feel better. You're getting tired. You have the feeling you are being watched. You see a small, hairy, sad-looking creature. Not many big people see, Domovoy. Most not look. You, something special. Maybe so? You, hero? Mordavia big hero need. Plenty powerful hero. Maybe you be soon. Learn much. Practice much. Soon plenty big hero. In where I am living. In Domovoy am I. Luck I bring. Way things go now, think most luck bad. Things at inn, not good. No people come. Innkeeper and wife, very, very unhappy. Mordavia, very, very sad place. Even Domovoy cannot help here. Oh, too much dark magic. Too much we speak, too much I talk. Sometime else we speak. Sometime else, I talk. Bad place here anymore. Good many years ago, but going very bad now. Many bad things here, you find out. Maybe talk again. You come down other night. Maybe have much to say. You unlock the door to your room and go in. In your sleep, you seem to hear voices. Do you see him? Yes, he is sleeping. Most likely in the inn. Although it is hard to focus the vision enough to tell. I do not understand why you did not just capture him in the first place. The charades you play are foolish. Silence! To serve us, it will be for the best if he acts under his own free will. Why make an enemy out of a willing tool? Oh, but I forget. He is already your enemy. This is not someone to play games with, I say. If he finds out what is going on, he will never cooperate. Besides, you risk his death. Mordavia is a very dangerous place. I think he is quite capable of taking care of himself. Besides, I have ways of making him cooperate, as you well know. I will use them only if I must. The voices fade off into oblivion. You awaken as the sun begins to rise. You hear some movement in the room. A voice from behind the door says, Oops, sorry. Seems I forgot about my burglar alarm. Hope it wasn't too shocking for you. Hello, 
Joe, how are you? Come in and have a sit, why don't you? As you sit down, a rude noise comes from the chair seat. <laughs> Gets you every time! A million laughs! How are you? Good to see you! Nice see you to drop in! Speaking of dropping in, did you hear the one about the bad waiter? Seems like he was always dropping in. Dropping in! Get it? Didn't think so. No one got a sense of humor anymore. <laughs> Not even me. This bedroom is furnished identically to yours, but the current occupant has decorated it with appalling taste. It's a braided, circular rug, just like the one in your room, only funnier. Somehow just looking at these garlic braids makes you smile. Hey, welcome in to the inn. Pleased to meet you. Sit down, have a seat. Oh, we did that already, didn't we? <laughs> but tell about some of your adventures. What was that you were saying about saving Spielberg? You tell about your adventures in Spielberg. So you're the guy that made me lose my sense of humor. Listen, if you hadn't made Baba Yaga mad, I never would have told the joke that made her take my humor away. I ain't got no sense of humor. I can't get no sense of humor, and I try, don't know why, gotta fly, say goodbye! What's the matter, you a music critic, so I can't tell a joke, sue me! I'm comedically challenged, a feeb of a fool, a dweeb dunce, as a matter of fact, I've been cursed, I'm vexed with a hex, so to speak. Pathetic, ain't it? I can't tell a joke if it kicked me in the teeth. Ever since I got Baba Yaga mad at me, I got the bad joke blues. She has no sense of humor whatsoever. Let me tell you, I was just telling a joke about how some hero got Baba Baby hopping mad and fit to be towed. How was I to know she was in the audience at the time? Anyhow, Baba Yaga stands up, says some bad poetry, and the next thing I know is my jokes are jumbled and my puns are pathetic. So here I am in Nowhere Land, trying to locate Baba Yaga so as I can get the curse removed and my humor returned. Putin Tane, ask me again, I'll tell you my name. Seriously, folks, the name is Bones. Punny Bones. I'm just a jester, professionally speaking, of course. Hey, I'm a professional fool, so don't try this at home, kid. Unfortunately, more people laugh at me than at my jokes lately. It's hard to be hilarious when your sense of humor is defunct. Punny, you should ask about that. Making jokes is in my bones, make no bones about it. But my puns have been sort of boneheaded lately. This place is really dead, you know. I've had a livelier audience in the graveyard. What do they know about humor? They think a guy falling into a mud puddle is a major joke, like lots of yucks, huh? Now, a man being tripped into a mud puddle, that's comedy. What do I hear? Let me see. Well, the talk of the town is you. No one knows how you got here or what are you doing, and they're still all a bit leery of strangers. You should see some of the looks they give me. You think they never saw a gnome before. Or you, for that matter. The chicken seems to be made out of rubber. What's rubber, you ask? You also consider how it would taste cooked in garlic. It makes the perfect cap to the gnome's jester costume. The rubber chicken squeals as you pick it up and squeeze it. Well, you'll have to keep her now. You obviously rub her the right way. Rub her, get it? The gnome likes to take a quick nightcap before he goes to bed. Nice to see a friendly face around here. Catch you later, dud.
So I ask you, what do you call a dinosaur crashing into a wall? Late for supper, of course. <laughs> See you later, crocodile. Nothing like a good breakfast to get you off to a good start in the morning. Especially when everything's laced with garlic. Mm, this inn used to do a steady business before this swamp prevented traders and tourists from coming. Now we mostly make our money off of food and drink. The castle was once that of the Boyar. Now we do not know who lives there. I do not gossip. Still you remain. It is a wonder you have managed to live so long. This is a little too easy now. You need to add more weight. You pick up two of the metal weights and put one in each of the baskets. Your legs are too stiff and sore to use this right now. After some rest, you feel better. After some rest, you feel better. Nikolai walks around looking for Anna all the time. Anna missing many years now. Yuri, innkeeper. Bella, keep in. <laughs> Little town humor there. Hmm. Dimitri Bitterman. Dimitri's father Bitterman too. Grandfather not Bitterman. Grandfather not married grandmother. Olga into healthy food. Olga eat plenty fruit and berries. Olga nuts. You are what you eat. <laughs> Whew. Business is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. Igor not hear rumors. Igor not know mad monks start monastery. Igor not know bad things get people who try monastery door. Igor wonder if you will verify this rumor. You tell the gravedigger that Dr. Cranium has asked Igor to bring him some fluid. Doctor asked Igor do strange things like dig up bodies. Igor bury bodies and Doctor make Igor dig them up again. Sometimes Doctor make Igor crazy. <laughs> the headstone carver stares at you and then goes back to work. He looks at you and then goes back to work. You greet the old man. You. We have met before, I think. I am Nikolai. Have you met my Anna? She is... Well, I do not know where she is. I am looking for her. Yes, well, I... I keep looking for Anna. Will you help me find her? She's missing. Anna has been gone for a long time. I have been looking for her for, for so, so very long. I, I do not know what has become of my Anna.
You start to tell the old man about the ghost you met in the forest. Anna? You have seen Anna? You explain that you saw her ghost in the forest. Anna is in the forest? Where is she? I must go to her. You tell Nikolai where you saw Anna and try to explain that she is dead. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough for finding my Anna. I will go to her now. I will help her find her way home. Thank you again. I believe I am on the verge of a major discovery. It came to me last night. I believe that there is a formula which can be used to create a rehydration solution. Such a solution could be used to restore fluidity to any substance or object that has become prematurely dry. But if we can but manufacture Dr. Cranium's rehydration solution in sufficient quantities, we could rehydrate the Great Shapirian Desert. Of course, there are a few small bugs to be worked out. It would take most of the water in the world's oceans to make that much solution. Uh, then there is the tiny snag that I have not been able to remember the formula since awakening from the dream. You say hello to the scientist. You are always welcome in my laboratory. However, I do wish you would wipe your shoes a little more carefully before entering. You relate the tale of your journey to Shapir, and how you saved two cities from the evil vizier Ad Avis and his elemental minions. Now you are talking science. The elements are the building blocks of everything in nature. I am sure I have never heard of anyone constructing creatures purely of a single element, but it certainly makes scientific sense. You say this Adavis referred to a dark master here in Mordavia? I am sure I have never heard of such a one here. There are rumors of strange goings-on in the castle, but I do not credit such tales without scientific observation to back them up. I have been feeling a bit dehydrated lately. It is this dry mountain air. Perhaps when I complete my rehydration solution, I can do something about the problem. The scientist never fails to observe nature. Why, if I had not gone on an observation trip in the forest, I would never have found that garden with all the rare and exotic flora. The forest outside of town is quite a fascinating area. The trees are primarily deciduous with the occasional conifer. A wide variety of fauna inhabits the forest, providing great opportunities for scientific research and occasionally excitement of other kinds. There is a beautiful garden in the forest southeast of town. It contains several varieties of plants and trees that cannot be found anywhere else in this region. I had some fascinating experimental results with the bush I dug up there. Unfortunately, I was not able to keep it alive in captivity. There used to be a bush that grew seven different types of blossoms in the garden. There is still a tree that provides fruit in a very peculiar cycle. There are also many beautiful flowers and plants growing there. I am convinced that the garden must have been intentionally planted, as it contains specimens that are not native to this region. Whoever planted it clearly did not understand the basic tenets of ecology. Fortunately, few of the spores have spread to the wider forest so far. It 
It is very important to understand the relationships of the scientific elements. Earth, air, fire, water, and pizza. Everything we know is made up of one or more of these elements. Here you are, one freshly brewed healing drink. Sip it if you get hurt, and its beneficial vitamins and other ingredients will help your body to recover quickly. Here you are, one freshly brewed universal poison antidote. Ah, oh, you need my world-famous rehydration solution. Unfortunately, I have forgotten the elemental formula of its main ingredient. <laughs> Perhaps you can help. Yes, that sounds just right. By the way, I could use some glue goo for one of my experiments. It would be most kind if you could bring me some when you return for the rehydration solution. Experiments are the meat and drink of science. First, you must come up with a hypothesis based on your understanding of the scientific elements. Then perform an experiment to test the hypothesis. Afterwards, you have a pizza. I have come to the conclusion that lightning is electrical in nature, which would put it in the realm of fire. Fortunately, there have been an increasing number of storms here lately, so I have been able to harness some of the lightning and store it for experimental use. Oh, I do seem to be a little careless in keeping track of my scientific formulae. I have them all written down somewhere. I think it was in the margins of one of my books here. I spent some time in Spielberg last summer. Everyone there kept talking about some hero who did some sort of noble deeds there. You would think that they could find more excitement in the modern accomplishments of science. There seemed to be quite an infestation of baby Antwerps there for some reason. I took advantage of the opportunity to capture a number of them in very blunt cages for my experiments. The Baron did not even charge me very much for them. Dr. Cranium's rehydration solution should be a shoe-in for the alchemical innovation of the animal ward. It contains the prime essence of the element of water in a perfectly condensed form. You say goodbye. Be sure to let me know of any scientific discoveries you should make here in Mordavia. Rehydration may prove to be a crucial step on the way to an even more important discovery, instant water.